All right, everybody, welcome to today's call. This is the TRC Live Sales Training Call. It is Friday, September 15th of 2017, and I'm always, oh, I'll be okay. I better calm down, right? <laughs> uh, I'm always excited to do these and looking forward to today's call. So just remember, when you come into these calls, if you're in a loud background, hit star six to mute your mic, star seven will unmute your microphone, okay? I wanna make sure that everybody is ready to go and we're focused here. One of the things that I talked to Voltaire about, one of our mastermind members, is that we would focus on making sure we go back and tilt the scales a little bit towards scripting. I also have heard that some of you say, well, there's a lot of talking, I can't get my questions. Baloney! Get your questions in, your salespeople. If you don't learn how to kick to the front of the line in this call, how are you going to learn how to do it in the field? So let's get going here, and I want a good, robust phone call today, and I want to talk about scripting. I'm going to go in the other direction. We talk a lot about concierge and tone and relationship building on the phone. That's great, but I want to talk about scripting. There are certain beats that you have to hit, okay? So here we go, and I'm going to see who wants to kick us off as I unhold everybody. Now, let me just check the mics, make sure. Again, I will say this. If you are in a loud spot, star six your mic. I already have a couple of microphones that are loud. Star six your mic. Jenny? Yeah, buddy, that's you, Doug. Your mic was super loud, so I had to star six you. So you'll, you'll have to, you'll stay on hold. I'll open it up for a second. Let me just double check. You there, Doug? Yes. Yeah, your mic was loud, but now it's okay. I need... I know, I'll mute myself after I ask my question. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Fire away. Okay, um, yesterday on the sales call, you said go for the close, go for the close. What cue do you need to go for the close? Because I tend, to, I tend to talk too much. Okay. Well, well, one of the things that we have to be careful of, it's a good setup for today. One of the things we have to be very careful of as, as we're in a sales situation is to remember we're in a sales situation, right? And, and I think when you get high on the relationship, which is easy to do, you know, it's very easy to get high in that moment when things are going well and you're, you're thinking to yourself, hey, I've made a human connection here. Isn't this exciting? Yes, it is. And that feels good, but it's easy to get lost in that moment and forget completely why you're there at all. And the reason that you're there at all is to get the outcome that you really seek. So give me a scenario and we'll go, we'll go into it, Doug. What scenario do you mean? Sitting down face to face with somebody? Yeah. Yesterday when we were working, um, you said go for the close and I kept asking questions. I didn't find an opening to go for the close. Yeah, okay. Uh, on the phone. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's no opening that's coming to us. It's an intuitive point in, in the game. And, and I gave you some buy signals. You know, you, you were more interested in continuing on this newfound exciting thing that you found that if you weren't so rude with some of the scripting and you were more personal and you came from contribution, great. That's the right gear shift, but now don't overcorrect it. You are not listening to the buy signals. In other words, I wanted you to close me for um, a, an appointment, and I already told you. So let's go back to it again. Bring it up again because it's a scripted performance. So let's talk about it. And, and we'll, we'll, you give me the scenario, and I'm going to go for the close while talking to you. So go ahead. Give me the scenario again so everybody knows. I, uh, I, I don't remember. Sorry. All right, Doug, it's too loud there, okay? I, I, I'm going to mute you. Yeah, just I mute don't. your mic. Mute your mic. I'll bring it up, okay? Yeah, let's let's just get this call under control here. So the bottom line is yesterday, Doug asked for a, a question. He was sitting in an, a, a presentation, and it was for on the phone, and it was for expireds. So this gets right into expired scripting where, you know, you, you're, you're trying to pay attention to what do you want? You want the appointment, if you can get it. This is presumably somebody who's expired and now they're thinking about relisting, right? So now you're in this position where you want to be the person that relists them. All right, hold on. Let me pause. Guys, let's try this again. If you're in a quiet spot, awesome. If you're in a noisy spot, you hit star six on your phone and then star seven unmutes it, okay? So who's ever in Kentucky, I had to mute you there. Got to pay be cognizant of this so we're respectful of this. Otherwise, I'm managing this and not coaching you. So the point is, what Doug was talking about was an expired 
okay? And the scenario was, he was asking me what's wrong. And I was sitting there with my cheat sheet in front of me, which is my, my infographic. I have two cheat sheets that I always go to. Now, of course, they're in my head at this point in time. But what you need is scripting and structure. You need to come to these conclusions. So there are certain beats you're looking for. If you're talking to a seller, you need to hit certain beats, right? And those certain beats are, are all about making sure they understand you have a strategy. So that's the script. And that's what Voltaire and I were talking about. Paul Mahalowicz and I were talking about this. We were sharing all of this stuff, going back and forth, where what we were saying is, look, you have to understand there's an outcome to this. If you're not moving people up or out of your database, you've missed the whole, the whole intent of prospecting. And it's important. The concept of prospecting is no matter how the lead comes to you or the contact comes to you, I don't even want to call it a lead. No matter how you're making contact with that human, there's an outcome you want, and that is to determine where they belong in your database. Are they ready for an appointment? Then book them, okay? If they're ready for an appointment, book them. Well, how do you know is, is what Doug is saying. Well, Doug said to me, well, Danny, what do you think went wrong? And that's the content that we're looking for with that concierge attitude. Not his old script was, hey, you know, when are you going to be ready to hire the right realtor? Basically calling me a moron for hiring the wrong one, right? That doesn't make any sense. So he corrected that. So he went back out there and said, okay, that was corny. I get it. And, and now he goes out and he says something a little bit different. Hey, Danny, it's Doug Converse calling from XYZ Realty. The reason I'm calling, I saw that you expired and I wanted to let you know I sent you something that'll help you figure out what went wrong. But while I have you, what do you think went wrong? So... I went and I said, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I just think the agent wasn't that aggressive when it came to marketing. Really? What part of marketing do you think they didn't get right? Well, I didn't see it in the newspaper. Well, you know, that's an interesting thing, Danny, because the newspaper for me used to be a really big thing too. I used to do all my advertising in there, display advertising, open house advertising, and it was a very, very important part. These days with digital, it's ironic, but even the Cape Cod Times, for example, is online. So a lot of what we would put in the newspaper ends up online. Now I get there's a few people that still read the newspaper for their classifieds, but as a marketer, we have to make decisions. So if you feel like that had been made, that decision had been made and it had been made erroneously or they didn't do it, and then that's a real marketing problem. But while I have you, what I want to tell you is that there's actually seven points to the strategy that we use. And marketing is definitely a huge component, but we can't even arrive at a marketing discussion until we've talked about the pricing range and how to price it right in that range, how to move up that range by reconditioning the property with low to no cost projects and pricing out the big ones, and then moving furniture around or bringing in a professional stager to open it up. That then gets us ready for that digital footprint. So Danny, are you thinking about listing again soon? You see where I'm saying? So we end up at this. So Doug, I'm going to open up your mic. If you can try to quiet it down in the background, that'd be helpful. Are you, um, are you there? Well, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Because I want you back in here to role play this out because it, you're asking the question okay. and let's role play it. Okay. So here we go again. Sure. I'm the expired and be scripted to the extent that you're staying on me for that outcome introduce yourself beat number one so i know why you're interrupting my life beat number two try to get me talking about what you think went wrong in the context you already know about me and and don't forget number three close me i'm going to tell you right up front i'm going to be in this role play closable you better close me when you feel it's right okay I'm still confused, but I'll, I'll, I'll try. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay. Go ahead. Because we haven't even started. So how can you be confused? See, that's a dangerous thing we tell ourselves. I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. That's a dangerous thing. How do you even know? I already greased the skids for you, and you don't even know what I've said yet. So why say that? And I'm bringing well, that know, up know, because... You just, you, just gave, you, you just gave me a... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. You just gave me a close and I can't remember what it was. Oh, who cares? Who cares? Be natural. Here we go. Ready? Hello? All right. Sure. Yeah, hi. I'm, I'm calling for Danny. This is Danny. Yeah, hi, Danny. Danny, my name is Douglas. I work with Avenue Properties. 
and I see that you took your home off the market. Is there, I'm really puzzled. What do you think stopped it from selling? Yeah, I don't know. I think I, I have a, a realtor who's a friend of mine, but um, I just don't. They're, they're more part time, and they're not really up on this latest marketing stuff. I, I just don't think there was any marketing, to tell you the truth. Ouch! So they're a little over their head, maybe. Huh? Yeah. Hey, by the way, that's a bad habit. That ouch. That's a word whisker. You don't need it because I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm not so sure it's appropriate. I caught it before, and I forgot to say something. So keep hit, hit me with that again. So Doug, I, I don't know. It, it's. Um, it just doesn't. It doesn't seem like they knew much about marketing because they're really part time. Yeah, it sounds like it was a frustrating experience for you. It was. Yeah. Wait, are you still interested in selling your home? I am. Yeah, I am. I need to move. Great, great. Yeah, I know. You know, I've got a seven step program for selling homes, and you know, each step handled correctly is what will get your home sold. And, uh, I was curious if you might like to see this and see if we can put our heads together, find out which step is mismanaged to see if we can correct it and get your home sold. Yeah, well, why don't you send me some information? Do you have some information? Well, absolutely. I'll send it to you. I'm going to go to you right now. Okay. All right. Thanks. Send, also, it, uh, send it over. You, you, have, me to email? you have my contact okay. information, right? Danny at dannygriffin.com. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> I blew that one. Well, you, you will, will try to recover yourself. Keep going. Okay. So, okay, great. When I send it to you, I'm going to follow up the phone call, and we can review it together. And you know, like I said, see if we can come up with a strategy so I can get your home so It sounds to me like you still want to sell, right? Okay. Let, let, let's go backwards. Ring, ring. Is Doug there, please? Doug. Hey, Doug, this is Danny Griffin calling from Griffin Realty Group. The reason I'm calling you, I saw that you expired in the MLS and I felt for you. So I sent you over some free information on trying to figure out, to help you figure out what went wrong in that, that whole process. But while I have you, we thinking about relisting it? Yeah, well, we do have to sell, yes. Okay. So what do you think went wrong the first time? Well, I, I hired a friend of mine as an agent. I just don't think he was qualified. You know, a part-time agent. Maybe this was just too much of a, a challenge for him. Yeah. How'd it go? Any showings? Any offers? Well, he held open houses the first couple of times, and there were some a lot of people coming through. But you know, after three months, it just sort of petered out. There was just no activity, no phone calls, and, and they lost communication with the agent. Okay. You know, which really. Was disturbing. Yeah, that's no good. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a difficult process, I feel for him. If he's a part-timer, I, I feel for him. There's, there's a lot going on here in the digital age. What I sent you, Doug, was a seven-step process that we take all our successful sellers through so that they, they really can see that it's quite a process. And so all the way from pricing to condition and staging, those are all things that we have to go through correctly before we can even arrive at marketing. And now marketing is both digital, um, offline, et cetera. So it's a pretty complicated process. So if you're thinking about relisting, which it sounds like you are, that's going to come in the mail and go over. But even better yet, if you want, I'd be happy to come over and go through that list with you and see if I can find the culprit. That sounds like it might make some sense. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. And what's the name of your company? Griffin Realty Group. Have you sold a lot of homes in this area? Yeah, quite a few. Um, in fact, what I'll do also, in addition, I'll send a link to all of the properties that we've sold. And if you want to go to see the Griffin.co, you can look at some of our featured properties and you can see some of the marketing that we do. And again, like I said, marketing is only a part of the whole process that we take you through so you can get this house sold. So if you're interviewing okay. agents now, what I'd rather do though, because it's obviously much more effective if I can come over there, it's free, it's no obligation, there's no pressure, but since you're in the thick of it right now and I've already sent the material, I'd rather come over and walk you through it, explain it to you, and show you what a proper strategy looks like to get a home sold, because this market's really tough. You might not realize that. I know it seems like it's easy for everybody, but it's not. It's difficult. And so if I can have a few minutes with you, I can walk through and at least I'll give you a strategy. So what time this week is usually good for you? Well, 
um, this afternoon would be your okay. Good. All right, so you got it. I mean, that wasn't one of my best role plays either, and I didn't try to make it one because I wanted to be very matter of fact and very to the you know to the point. I wanted to just cut to the chase and say to you, look, man, here, here's here's what I sent you. Now remember, let's go back on this thing and push back on me a little bit because that was the one that was more so. The script beats are here's who I am and why I'm interrupting you. Okay, here's what I sent you as a gift so that you can see how to do this correctly. So whether you want to talk to me or not, I've already sent the gift to you. You take a look at that. There's a whole strategy in there. But while I have you, what do you think went wrong? And if you're in the thick of trying to figure that out, you're not quite sure or you think it's part of it. Why don't I just come over while we're talking? And since you're in the thick of it, let me just come over. There's no sweat off my back. I won't pressure you. Let me just go through the whole thing with you. A second opinion is always valued. I mean, this is the single largest financial transaction most people make in a lifetime. Why wouldn't you want my opinion? Well, who are you? Oh, no problem. Let me send you a link to my website. Validated. Let me send you a link to some of the souls that we sold in your neighborhood. Validated. Let me send you a link to some of my testimonials. Validated. Whatever. Whatever it takes. And that's why I'm spending so much time these days on my digital footprint on the website to make sure that that stuff to validate that I'm a real person on the other end of the line is there so that there's nothing lost in translation or in timing, right? So you have to be, if you're going to be prepared for anything, it's not, oh my gosh, I can't remember what you just told me to say. Yes, you can. Here's who I am and why I'm interrupting you. Okay, uh, I, here's what I sent you as a gift. Those two things introduce me and give me context. And they also say, I gave you a gift and that's why you should give me a few minutes of your time so you won't hang up on me. And now that I have some of your time, what do you think went wrong? And now that you're talking to me a little bit, can I come over? I mean, it's one, two, three, four. It's like a dance step, right? Now, now we could, we could get into a lot of the conversation about you know, what goes on beyond that. But I mean, the truth be told, that's it. Okay, so Doug, does, I know Doug, you're in a noisy place today. Does that help? Okay. Yes. No. Yes, Danny. Okay, yeah, cool. All right, good. All right, buddy, you're in you're in too noisy a place today. You, yeah, you're in too noisy a place today. So I'm going to move on. All right. So uh, off we go. Who's up next? I want somebody to role play with me about a script. That's what I need. I need a script because I promised Voltaire that I would be there with a script today going over this. Somebody, somebody, you can beat me up, by the way, okay? You don't have to be the one. So that's fun for you. So if you're a team player or on a team, I expect to hear from you. Angela, I know you're back in the hot seat again today. If you want to play that role with me too, I'll take you. Angela. Go ahead. Angela. Sorry, I had it muted. That's okay. That's okay. Hot seat. I have <laughs> Hot seat. Give me give me a situation. Well, by the way, let's tell them what we taught you yesterday too. Same thing, right? You had a challenge. Now you give me the challenge that we had yesterday with sales and how your scripting performance was out of whack. Tell me. Um, for me, it was the confidence issue yep. of describing how I'm new to the real estate business on the selling aspect. Um, but I've been around the development part, so I felt really new. So it's about trying to um, squeeze in or finagle my development background into my conversation. Right. Um, you know, to make it seem like I'm far more versed in – well, I am. I you, mean, I there you go. Not, good good catch. So they, I guess they feel better about my background. Yep, cool. So, so you're a rookie in this end of the business. Let me give everybody context here. She's a rookie. So, but she's no rookie to life. She's no rookie to business. In fact, she's grown up in the development business in her family, third generation. Been on building sites since she was three or four. But the big problem, and she's in a very high-end area with Gail Rossetti's team in Atherton, Palo Alto area in California. So it's easy to get intimidated, right? We think everybody's a genius, and they're not. Because they don't do this every day. But it is normal to feel that you're out of sorts. And, and it is easy to cheat towards concierge only, right? And, and I think that some of the best people in this business, and next week while I'm away, I'm going to have Paul Cantu in the hot seat for sales training so that you can hear somebody who's a pro that does it every day. So, but what I wanted to tell you is that when Doug was talking too, it was the same thing. You, you, can't, you can't be giving yourself, oh my gosh, I can't remember what to say kind of nonsense. Of course you do. What did you do? All of a sudden not become a human being? 
you forgot how to talk to people? Like you're telling me if you need groceries and, and you get down to the grocery store and you don't know where the meat department is or the vegetables, you don't know how to ask? Come on. It's just, we're, we're always trying to put this context that's so burdensome on ourselves. Be human. You don't know what you don't know, but you have to start somewhere. So you can be, you can get out of that hole by being resourceful. Okay? So I want to take that further with you now that you have that mindset beat. And I want to go into something a little bit, you know, deeper. Okay? And that is timing and motivation and all these other things. I want you to call me. I'm a buyer. Okay? I'm an internet buyer lead. So, in other words, you don't know much about me. And I want you to call me, and I want to go through this a little bit and see where we see how far we can get, okay? Yes? Okay. All right. Stay open. Stay the, Keep the mute. Everybody's a little sleepy today. Everybody go out and get some coffee. Holy mackerel. Get some coffee. Get fired up here. You know, this is your life. You ready, Angela? Here we go. Ring, ring. You're, you'll call me, okay? You call me. We'll go slowly. Okay. I'm calling you. Yep. Hello. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi, may I speak to Danny. Speaking. Hi, Danny. My name is Angela. I'm with Rosetti Realty. Um, I just saw uh, that you were interested in purchasing a house here in the Silicon Valley. So I just wanted to see if I could get some more information from you about exactly what you're looking for. Sure. What do you need? Um. Do you have a specific city you want to live in, or maybe do you want to live in a particular school district if you have children? Sure, I, I thought I... Do you have I, a budget that you'd like to stick to? Yeah, I thought I put that in, Angela. Did I not? I mean, I put it up to, you know, a million five, and I put in Atherton, um, because I know the Atherton school system is pretty good. Did, did that not come through? Okay, so I would have had that information. Um, yeah, you know, fair enough. Keep going. Plow, um, plow right through it. Always, Take the objection. Yeah. Take the objection. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Um, um, your information did come through. I was just curious if Atherton was the only place that you were interested in living or if you wanted to look at any um, outskirts cities of Atherton, if you wanted to uh, possibly look at Memo Park or, or um, Los Altos or other places that have great school districts or if your mindset is strictly set on just Atherton and that's it. Well, you know, it's a good question. I'm, I'm from the East Coast. I don't know much about it. So uh, somebody told me that I'm going to work with out there in Atherton, that the school system is good. Is that right? What, well, I don't know much about Menlo Park. Is it the same school district or how does that work? They are different school districts, uh, but they are very good, both of them. Mm -hmm. It depends on, are you looking for private schooling or public schooling? No, public, public. Public schooling. Okay. The Menlo Park public school system is excellent. So is the Atherton one. Los Altos has a great public school system also. So those are places that all would have what you're looking for in your budget, and they all have great school districts. Mm -hmm. Would you be interested if I sent you information about those cities and property that are there too? Yeah, that, that sounds fine. That sounds fine. Just, just keep it in that price range, and I'm fine. Is it more expensive in, in Menlo Park? Menlo Park can tend to be a little bit more expensive, uh, depending on the area. But you can, de I can definitely find you something within your budget in a great school district, and you'll be happy. I promise. Okay, um, sounds good. Thanks. Okay. So at this point, like, do I do I just all send good? Him the stuff after all this all good. All good. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, tell you what. This is a it's a good it's a good segue. There's a couple of questions. Um, a lot of us grew up in a world with Craig Proctor, who grew up in a world with Mike Ferry, and there's a lot of the hardcore scripting that goes there. So you see, this is what, what my point was. We can't get too far off the dock and forget why we're there. So the most important thing in my world is I was taught to establish motivation and timing. I don't know that you can establish motivation very easily, early on in conversation, but you can determine timing pretty easily. Now, a lot of people have this nonsensical line in their head that buyers are liars. No, they're not. They don't, if they're, if they're lying to you, it's because you're bugging them and they want to get, get away from you as fast as possible. That's one reason, in my experience, I found. The other reason that they're lying is they don't know. A lot of buyers don't know what they don't know. This is a big financial transaction. It might be a big move. They might be selling. They might be emotional. Well, they, they will be emotional. So all this stuff is in this stew of emotion. And what happens in that whole stew of emotion is, is that we forget 
that we're just trying to determine timing. See, we're, pr we're prospecting here, Angela. So when you're picking up the phone, you're trying to develop a prospect. And what's a prospect? That's somebody beyond a lead. A lead is something that just, they're, they're a dime a dozen. In fact, they're actually the new problem because a lot of people whimsically opt into things and they get passed off as leads. They're nothing. Actually, they're noise. But a prospect is somebody who's giving you some time of day. They're giving you some dialogue and you have to remember you need an outcome there. So if there's one outcome, I really, 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 really would want you all to learn from me. It's get the timing, get the timing. If you have to fight, kick and claw and you only have a quick nanosecond to get anything out of a conversation, the first outcome in prospecting, get their timing. Motivation is a more esoteric, um, nebulous type of terminology. You can find out why they're moving. Okay? That might give some insight into their level of motivation, but take it from a guy who's obsessed with mindset and head stuff. Motivation is a very difficult thing to gauge and even help with. But timing and the why, those are more factual, right? Does that make sense to you so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, hey, this is Danny Griffin. The reason I'm calling is because you yes, came in... This is her. Okay, you, the reason I'm, are you guys getting an echo on me? Because I I'm, I get a delay a, a little bit. Can you hear me okay on this call? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, all right, there was a little delay with you and Doug. I didn't know what it was. So Angela, the reason I'm calling is because that you are on our website taking a look at some properties and I want to make sure, number one, it's working correctly and you're getting what you want. Yes, so far it seems to be popping up the results that I've wanted to look at. Excellent. So just confirming Atherton up to a million five, that seems to be what you chose. Is it only Atherton that you wanted? Um, I mean, as far as I know, I'm not from the area. I'm relocating for work. Uh, Atherton seems, from what I hear, like a really um, great neighborhood. It's safe. I hear a lot of families live there. So that's why I was interested in, in possibly moving there. Perfect. So is this a move that you're going to make inside the next six months or so? Um, yes, probably within the next three months or so. Great. Where, where were you moving from? Um, I'm moving from Southern California. Oh, okay. Did you have a house in Southern California to sell to get here? renting a house at the moment. Oh, good. Any any challenges with long-term leases that you'd have to get out of? Uh, no. No, the lease will be up before I move up there. Okay, perfect. So, I don't know whether you have somebody to help you or not. Have you been up here already and seen some properties, work with a realtor at all? No, no, I've never been to the area. Okay. All right. So what I could do is I could go in here a little bit deeper and dig in. But the question I have for you, since nobody's really helping you, will you be up here again in Northern California in the Bay Area anytime soon? Um, I'll be there in about a month to go look at my new office. Oh, perfect. So uh, let me just ask another quick question, if you don't mind. Uh, are you pre-qualified for loan or are you paying cash? Um, I am pre-qualified for a loan, yes. Okay, super. So the reason I asked that, it's a very competitive market up here in Atherton, and since nobody's guiding you, I wanted to make sure you had all your ducks in a row because if you're moving that quickly, it's tough. So what I should do, and I will, is I will send you a list of properties that have sold for the money that you're pre-qualified for. So what was that number again? Is it up to a million five? Um, I'm Okay, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll send you a list of the properties in the last 90 days that have sold. I'll go a little bit over that too so you see what's there and a little bit under that. And I'll send you those solds because that'll give you a better idea for what actually is happening here. Because we're in such a hot market, these asking prices you're seeing online are actually going to be a little bit under where the property ends up. So I want you to get a feeling for the competitive nature that Atherton is at the moment. So that's why I want to send you the solds. Then what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll tweak the criteria. Well, because you're looking at it online to a syndicated site, I'm actually going to put you into my MLS directly since your move is so soon. And the reason for that, 
I can put more criteria in there and it's direct from the source. So the minute that an, a, a, myself or somebody else adds a listing in Atherton, it would be immediately in your inbox with more detailed specificity. So beyond the things that you've seen, what's most important to you in this house that you're going to buy? Um, well, I'd love to have a pool because we have children. Great. So that would be really important to me if you could find me a house with a pool. And I'd also love to be in a great school district. Perfect. Since I do have two small children. Perfect. Well, it seems like you've narrowed down to Atherton and they have an award-winning school system. So I would say that's a winner. Menlo Park's pretty good too. I don't know if you know anything about that, but I think what I should do now that I hear that, let's stay focused on that pool too. So when I send you these solds, I'll make sure that they only include a pool because I'm guessing the pool now sounds like it's a deal killer if it's not there. Or would you be willing to put one in? I mean, with with small children and a big move and I'm, I'm switching to a different company, there's a lot going on. I would prefer if we didn't have to put a pool in. I would like a house that's moving ready, that has the pool so the kids can enjoy themselves and I can go to work and do my thing and not have to worry about any construction or Perfect. people coming in and out. Perfect. As the father of five kids, I get it. And I agree with you. That's a good move. So what I'll do is I'll send you the solds. I'll go into MLS and I'll tighten up the criteria. And as you see these, let me know which ones you like. By the way, since it's such a close period of time to when you'll come up here, I'm also happy to go out and preview a couple of your favorites so that I can actually tell you my opinion about the exact location, the exact condition, and we can start to warm you up so that by the time you come here, you can hit the ground running. Does that make sense? No, that sounds awesome. Perfect. I'm on it. So I'll be in touch with you and you say you're coming up in a month. I'll be in touch with you as soon as you let me know that you see something. But in the meantime, I'm going to start sending this stuff out to you and then I'll call you, I don't know, a week or so out. Why don't you pick a couple of those favorites? Let me take a drive by while I'm out and about with some other folks and I'll give you an opinion on what I think those are like. And remember, things are going pretty quickly here. So don't be, you know, don't be upset if a couple come on and they disappear. They're like buses. There will always be an next one so we'll find you something okay okay perfect sounds great Danny all right nice talking to you all right flip the script on me come back at me do you see what what you probably didn't hear was a clear scripting there right you didn't hear it because and I cheat because it's in front of me and I'm human and I don't want to get caught up with this nice gal on the other end of the phone who has kids and I feel for her and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go too far into that because then all of a sudden I forget what I have to do and the, the clock that maybe is not sitting there physically is ticking off and people delude themselves to thinking that creation of prospects um, is this long drawn out thing when the truth is, and Paul Cantu, you're on if you want to weigh in on that role play I just did. There's got to be this like the speed with which we get through this because we probably have one solid hour a day that we should dedicate to the creation of prospects and part of that time is on the phone and you only have so many dials you can make and a phone call like that can only last so long. Cantu, you there with me? I know you texted me earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. What'd you think? Comments? I thought, I, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was perfect. I mean, you asked all the relevant questions. Um, you know, I mean, you're a little bit more I than me. Yeah. You asked probably a little bit more than I would. Or, but yep. uh, I thought it was perfect, man. I'm, uh, I, 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 I need <laughs> I need you as an ISA. Yeah, and I need you. <laughs> so, so, you know, well, Paul, you know what? That's interesting. What Paul just referenced, if you missed it, I'll go back and rewind the tape a little bit where he said, I'm a little bit more I than he is. So we're both D, dominant, I, influential. We both have that in our personality. So his reference was I was a little bit more, trying to be a little bit more influential, a little bit more talkative. But I'll tell him why and all of you why I was doing that. She gave me clear buy signals here. She told me that this is really happening. That made me interested in asking those further questions. Does she have something to sell? Because this gal is ready to go. Does she have her money in line? Does she have something to sell that will screw up the offer that I'm going to put in for her? And am I? And now that I'm here, am I really there? And and what you probably didn't notice that was a little bit more subtle in the conversation, but very specific for me. I made an offer. That would benefit her. And that was, hey, you're down there not coming here for 30 days. Give me a couple of your favorites and I'll drive by. And I will. Because 
if I'm working in area, and we were using her area of Atherton, California as an example, if I'm working in area, there's a high probability that dropping my kids off to school in the morning or driving around to another seller's house, I'm going to pass by these houses. So it's not like all of you that are fretting it. Well, I would never get up off the seat and go do that. Yes, you would, because you exist in these areas as long as they're in this tight knit area you're covering. So you go by and you say, geez, I drove by that house today. That's a dog, right? I'm telling you, it looked good online. I, I even thought, thought, go ahead, say it. Say it, Paul. I thought that was an extra, I, mean, that, I thought that was a super awesome extra value added offer. And it's not that I'm one of these people that I'd never get up off my seat. I would never have thought to offer it. So I'm going to use that when I have out of town people because, right. I, I mean, yeah, if it's, if it's just right by my house within 15 minutes, I'd be happy. Ex ex exactly. I never would have even thought about offering that. Well, Paul, you know what, too? It goes back to the whole marketing decision that we talk about at the mastermind level. If I make a decision that I, I'm going to fish the whole ocean, I'm less likely to think about it, right? So it always starts with this lack of strategy to right. begin with. But if I'm sitting here in the village of Osterville and I know that I have to go to Falmouth to, to do this, or I know I have to go over here and she's looking in that area and I'm saying, oh, yeah, the next time I go out to an open house, I could kill two birds with one stone. I mean, I, I pee more time away sitting still talking to myself than I would adding tremendous value to this young lady with a young family, right? So it's just that that is the beginning of a proactive approach to take this very good prospect I just discovered and move her right into client. She's going to drift smoothly into client the minute she hits here because I know she wasn't working with anybody. She was doing it herself. There was no pushback. She played nice. So that's a real deal, right? That's a real deal. Now, in my case, I might get off the phone and say, hey, Laura, she's the real deal. She's coming here. Make sure you say hello. Get these criteria tightened up. Get her over into MLS too. Don't leave her just in Real Geeks or Market Leader or over here. Don't just leave her in a syndicate. It's like get her into MLS too. And that's what we do, Paul. It's that, it's that next level. So the two beats for this gal were let me put you directly into MLS so that you get everything directly. It's not syndicated. I'm not saying that those aren't as fast, but syndication should screw up could screw up the information so let's tighten that up and more importantly we discovered this at our team meeting when you're in mls paul depending on the software you're using we have a lot of criteria in mls that we can tighten it up now pools you could do anywhere but to be able to then say hey you know what though i'm also going to send you a batch of sold houses in atherton with pools that close in the last 90 days so now she sees the manifestation of her money that she's about to commit to she sees it. And now I'm the guy that delivered that uniquely like nobody else because everybody's lazy and they don't think, right? And I mean that in a friendly, competitive way. It's That's hustling. That's thinking. And that's why I said to these guys, don't always be so scripted, but the beats that I got, when? Do you have to sell a house and you're going to slow me down, okay? So I got those things. Now, I think the old script here, you know, I'm looking at the old script while I was saying it, Paul. Are you planning on making a move in the next three to six months? Are you planning on making a move inside the next six months, I said, okay? Because to me, that's a real prospect. I treat those prospects differently. So that's my segmentation. Then if she gave me more right now signs, now I know she's a, a, a weekly follow-up for sure and might even mix in some extras, but then are you planning on staying in the area? And if you were to move, there's too many of the same questions for me in that old universal script. When are you doing this? Okay. Do you have any burdens to buy? Like anything. Is the money not in line? Is there a house to sell? Are you renting? Those are burdens. So when are there burdens, right, that we can overcome? And here's what I can do for you now that I know that stuff. I mean, I think that's your script. Would you agree or disagree? Or would you add anything, subtract anything? Uh, I, I think you know, I still, I still pretty much use the universal callback script, you know, as a template, you know, I mean, for the initial part of my call. But you know, like you, you know, it ends up just becoming a conversation, you know, after you get the initial determining of timing and motivation, it does become a conversation and. Like you said, if you really feel like you have a true buyer or a true seller, yeah, it's going to become more in-depth and it's going to go more the I direction. So, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you on all points there. Okay, so one of one of uh, Voltaire's 
challenges with me, and I talked to Paul Mahalowicz about this, who's a tremendously good prospector and has hired people to do it. There's always the debate between descript and not descript, and I do agree with Voltaire that when you're training somebody else to do it, a lot of what we might do is intuitive and we get there, but like you just said, you wouldn't have thought to do that. Well, like we're always learning, right? I'm always learning, and the worst part is I always forget. That's the most dangerous thing to teach here, Angela, is that even pros like Paul and I, we tend to forget. Okay, and I'm going to let you role play with Paul next because he's very good and has a, a, a different tonality and style than I do. So uh, I'll let you do that with Paul next here. Um, but, but I think the key is what do you think about the challenge? Like, you know, Vanessa, so, you know, uh, Voltaire's sister. So Volt she is very concierge and so is Laura. And they tend to do a better job with clients and easier to deal with prospects but they don't always do well with more difficult to figure out leads. So there's where that concierge versus that real driven, get the answer person, you know, gets difficult. So, so now what? So now what, what do we do? What do we do about that? How do we reconcile that difference for Voltaire? Um, because she keeps cheating off the script. Is it the script or is it the wrong person for the right job? And should she move up to look easy to do prospects and clients? Paul, that's the question I don't think that anybody can answer. That's yeah. the question I don't think that anybody but the team leader can answer because they're with that person every day. Like I, I could definitely differentiate on my team like who should work with uh, leads and who should work with prospects, but that's because I'm around them every day. Yeah, well, I just, I just you know, checked. I just. Tough yeah, Paul, I just checked the Her list. Is not in the office. I just checked the list and Vanessa's on now. Um, Vanessa, did you hear what I, I just said? I would say that someone like Jonathan might or might not be on this call. Yep. Um, and if I cut out, I'm sorry, I'm way out in the country right now and it's really bad reception, but um, Jonathan Leon uh, can seem seems really well to be, you know, pretty aggressive with me. He can also be kind of long-term concierge. You know, different people have different... Uh, I think I do better with uh, with leads personally than prospects because I get kind of burned out on kind of long chit-chat conversations. So I think I'm better personally with leads. Yeah, cool. Uh, Vanessa, did you hear what we said? Vanessa, I can see you there in San Diego or somebody's on San Diego's line. Is that you, Vanessa? You got to un unmute your microphone. Hi, um, I'm here, but it, you you keep breaking. Like, I don't know if it's me losing service. Or I know. Well, well, Paul, well, Paul was... Up yeah, Paul was breaking out. A lot. I am? Yeah. Am I still? Yeah. I'm still cutting out? You are, Danny. Ah, oh, shoot. That's not good. Hang on one second. Yeah, that even cutting out. Okay, hang on. Let's try another. Uh, am I still there? Am I still there? Yes. Yeah, okay. I've just been cutting in and out a lot. Yeah, okay. Well, I changed, I changed uh, internet networks. So let's see if that uh, does the trick. So, Vanessa, did you hear what I said? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so well, well, the debate rages with Voltaire and I about how scripted you should be. So what I basically said is that you know there, there's this script that he keeps getting frustrated that you're not following, and I asked the question of Paul Cantu. I I said, is it really about the script, or should you be spending more time with clients and easy to deal with prospects and somebody else? dealing with leads who has a more matter-of-fact attitude. What do you think? Be because that's what we're doing. Well, a uh, perfect example was I got a call right now uh, a little bit ago. Yeah. And they called asking for Voltaire. I have a bunch of lines that come into my phone. So I assumed, which was my mistake, that it was an agent calling to schedule a showing for a listing that we have. So I... Uh, pulled up the MLS and yeah, it says to schedule it directly with Voltaire. So I got her information and I said, what brokerage are you with? Yeah. She said, Oh no, I'm just a regular old buyer. And I said, Oh, okay, nice. Uh, you know, do you have a realtor that's helping you already? Yeah. Which is one of the questions in the script, sure. but it's not the first question to ask. Um, my first in instinct was to get that out of the way before I even ask any more questions. Absolutely. Um, and she said, 
uh, no, I don't. That's why I'm calling Voltaire to get into this property. And she gave me, she was, she was a bit, she became a bit rude when she saw that I start was going to start asking more questions. I yeah. said, okay, yeah, Voltaire can, can definitely get you into the property. So do you plan on, you know, uh, making a move in the next three to six months? And she said, ma'am, I'm just trying to see the property. I called for Voltaire so I can schedule a showing and go into the property. And I said, okay, yeah, I, I completely understand. Um, I just have to ask you a few questions before, you know, I can have Walter give you a call back just so he can know, you know, what kind of showing he's going to be scheduling. Do you have some time for that? And she's like, no, I, I really don't have the time for that. Yeah. And Voltaire was hearing, he was here in the office, so he was hearing, you know, on and off. I think he, like, walked in and out of the office while I was with her. Yeah. So I just respected that, and I said, that's fine. Let me get your information. I'll have Voltaire call you back. Um, oh, she said, if Voltaire can't do that, then I will look for another realtor and that realtor can get. Okay, good, the good. Stop. Okay, that's stop. Fine. Yeah, good. Stop. That's what did, hold on. Stop. Good. I got enough of the. I, yeah, hold on, Paul. One second. Yes, please I got, judge me. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I got, eno I got enough meat. I got enough meat on the bone, but hold on. What did Voltaire say? Because you said he was listening. I want to know what he said once he heard a real yes, challenge. So when, when we hung up, he said, What do you think? could have done differently on that call and right away i mean i said i i don't know you know the lady was uh trying to get down to the point of just scheduling the showing and um i said maybe i messed up by assuming that she was an agent and he said yeah uh you should have just you shouldn't have even asked if she had an agent that yeah but who cares but yeah but, yeah, yeah, but who cares oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know i don't agree i, I disagree with him i just do so the I just do. I just dis I disagree with them. So, Go so ahead. We agreed that, you know, any calls that I get for any inquiry about any property, you know, don't assume who it is. Just go straight into the script and say, do you plan on making a move in the next three to six months, months which is the first question. And I don't 100% agree with it, but I'm going to try it just because. He said, if it's an agent, they're going to say, oh, haha, ha, I'm an agent. Uh, you know, I'm calling to schedule it for my client. And then that's when you know it's an agent. And All right. Paul, go ahead. Paul, go ahead. You wanted to say something. Paul, you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I disagree totally with Voltaire on this. If someone calls and they want to see a house, I don't ask them anything. I say, when would you like to see that house? What day and time? Book the appointment and then call your OSA. Even if it's a team leader, say, hey, Voltaire, I got somebody who's hot and bothered to see this house the osa is the one the osa is the one that's going to uh call back hey this is voltaire thanks so much i'm looking forward to seeing you on saturday at three o'clock oh by the way you know um are you pre-qualified that i got to help you with that or you know are you working with another agent or am i the first person you call they're going to figure it out but if someone's hot and bothered to book an appointment book the appointment they're so damn hard to get these days just book the appointment is my opinion absolutely i'm i'm with you yeah I mean so he he called he called her, yeah. and then he asked, you know, the questions, determined that she, I guess, was just using a big um, down payment. She's not, you know, he got more information to where I don't even think he scheduled the appointment, but he said, you know, she's worth me calling back just because of the property that she inquired about and yeah, things like I that. But never, um, I would never ask my, OS, my ISA to ask any other questions, especially if you feel right away that person's getting annoyed. If you ask one question and that person's already getting agitated, just book the appointment. Screw it. I mean, don't don't risk losing the appointment. I mean, if she's talking about calling other realtors and stuff, that's crazy. They're dead. Just book the appointment and get it done. Yeah, let's go back and autopsy this a little bit yeah. more. When 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 you had when he went backwards and he made the follow up call to her, what did he determine? He didn't show her the property. Oh, so uh, it sounds like I want to say she, she turned out to be like an investor or looking to just go with a listing agent um, <clears throat> or she's looking for to just work with listing agents like pocket listings. So um, uh, he I think she just wanted to see it today. It's tenant occupied. He said he could get her in this weekend, something okay. like that. Yeah. But I mean, clearly she wasn't even worth or I don't even know what she said back to him but you know to even schedule a buyer appointment you know Paul, let me ask hey, let me yeah. show you other properties. Paul, 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 let me ask you a question here. I'm going to get somebody else's opinion, yeah, sure. and anybody else can can weigh in on this too. Um, because rather than just disagree with the guy, um, I, I want to go a little bit deeper into it. Uh, my my thought is, 
if here's my thought, Paul, you tell me what you think about this. My thought is if we get overly scripted or we demand an overly, because here's what's happening. He's demanding a very scripted performance from her. And, and I told him I would go right to it. Okay. Because he's very hyper-focused on it. And I have to deal with the ups and downs of scripting to script or not to script is the question. And, and when she starts to get such pressure to go in and ask these questions, I think in my opinion, she has completely missed the ability to find out what she could have already found out. Hey, hey, you know what? This lady's an investor. She just wants to see this one directly. So why don't you call her back and decide what you want to do? She's not going to work with us. You know? Oh. Go ahead. Oh, and I, I'm, I'm like 100% sure that was part of our conversation when I gave him the phone number and I said, you know, it sounds like she wants to talk directly to you know, any listing agent for any property she she is going to be. I, she When she said, oh, I'll go with another realtor, I think she did it to just kind of like make me jump off in my seat and be like, no, 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 you know, like let's schedule which, it now. Which is and right. Like, okay, no, wait, 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 but, 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 but Vanessa, work. Vanessa, that's her right to do that and you should jump off your seat like Paul's saying. Absolutely. What if she's an investor who does want to buy this property and you just missed it? I mean, one of the greatest ways, I, look well, at one of the greatest phenomenons. I think I missed it from the gate just because I messed up by yeah, but to yes. her with questions. Well, well, that's what I'm worried about. And Paul, um, maybe, yeah, maybe Paul can weigh in this. That's what I'm worried about in general. It seems like you're a little bit disconnected from where these calls are coming and what their context is. It, it, you seem a little bit confused. So in other words, he still gets a lot of so, inner, yeah, go ahead. That's another thing, yes. Uh, if they're calling off of a for sale sign, I automatically answer knowing it's someone that's driving by a property because my caller ID shows that. Yeah. This one, uh, just with the few changes that have been going on in our office, um, when they called and asked directly for Voltaire to my cell phone, uh, saying they wanted to schedule something, that's where I messed up. If, you know, it's safe to say I messed up because I assumed it was an agent calling for the listing agent to schedule. A yeah, but so what? So so what? That's just that's one heartbeat. I don't understand why that's even a big deal. So what? So what? So what? That doesn't affect the rest of the call, you know? Because you say to me, I, I say ring, ring, and you answer the phone. Um, hey, is Voltaire there? Ask me the question. Are are yeah. you an agent? Oh, like no. like give me no, give me the scenario. Not yeah. Okay. I want to see one of his properties. Okay. Uh, are you an agent or a buyer? Nope. I'm a buyer. Just looking to, you know, see the, see the property. Got it. Okay. Uh, which property were you looking to see? 123 West Main Street. Okay. Uh, do you, are, well, that's where... When would you like to see it? Yes, Do right. Why is it such a big yeah, deal? Well, when would you like to see it? When would, when would you like, like to, see to see it? Right. Why is this a big deal? I'm, I'm, I'm sensing such a theme today. Yeah, go, Dean. Can I, can I jump in for Of course, Dean. Of, I'm, hold on. Hold I'm, on, Vanessa. I'm sensing a theme today. I hear more people worried about getting through a script and getting answers to the scripted question than I am about hearing people having conversations. Yeah. But Dino, the challenge on the plate here, so, and you hold on, Vanessa, hold on, be be a good listener here, because yeah. this is all to benefit you, yeah. very much. So be a good listener. Yeah. Let's listen to what both these guys have to say. When I ask this question, Dean, I'm I'm going to say that I'm I have to respect Voltaire's request to get a specific outcome, Understood. right? So keep that in mind. Now come on in, and you tell me what you've heard today but, and what you would do. But can we? Can we have that mentality in a form of a conversation and hit the questions when the opportunity presents themselves to avoid confrontation? I the think, last thing you want yeah, to do with yeah. a lead or a prospect is avoid confrontation. You and Paul are on the... Is, is, is encouraged conference, conference, you, conference, you, conference. you and Paul are on the same page, and it's exactly what I did, I think, is that I had a little bit more of a clear-cut deal with Angela, but when you walk in there, it's like, hey, hey um, Vanessa, can you mute your mic for a second? Your office is super loud. Just mute your mic yeah. for one second. Thanks. Okay, so so the, the point here, it, Dean and Paul, is that I do believe that there are beats that we have to hit to get the outcome. And I agree with you, Dean. I like what you said. 
Because I, that's, I think, what I did. And Paul, it's probably intuitively what you do, right? And that is, we get that conversation rolling to get a sense of the attitude on the other end of the phone and its situation, its context. Then we have these scripted performance questions that we can grab and, and teach you to get the outcome. Is that where you're at, Dean? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's like, like, Paul, like Paul was just jumping in and I was, I was cringing trying to find the mute button on my phone at the same time. It's like, just book the appointment. And right. the minute you book the appointment, how about then saying, are you only interested in this property or are you interested in others as well? It opens a conversation along the same line of the question of the request that they're making. Y so we can get to all those questions by leading them with the answers to the questions that they're asking us. I'll promise you on the phone, if you don't give something to somebody, something they ask for or the, or the free gift you're giving, that whole conversation goes sideways quickly a lot. And that's the whole concept they started that's, with. The, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the, whole, right. the whole law of reciprocity. You got it. Yeah, I, I want to book an appointment. I want to book an appointment. Terrific. When are you available to do that? Okay, great. Are you on? Now, they got to give us something back. Are you on, interested in that property or are you looking at others as well? Absolutely. It, it, creates a, it creates the possibility of a conversation. If they say, nope, only that one. Okay, terrific. Right. No problem. I'll, I'll book the appointment. We go from there. Pass it over to Voltaire and let him have the let him make those questions and say, okay, in order for me to make this, you know, I gotta vet you. Yeah. You know, and and not necessarily in those words, but now he can he can dig a little bit more and have a more meaningful conversation at the time where he, where somebody says, well, I want to go see a house, and I can say, well, hold on a second. Yeah, I agree with the pop. And, and I can yeah, say at the time, well, you know what? For the sake of my client, I gotta make sure you're not an axe murderer. Yeah, absolutely and right. Dean, are you ready? Dean, go ahead. You got it. I mean, you, Paul, go ahead. You, yeah, what I'm saying is you make your ISA's job so much easier. I mean, Vanessa shouldn't be the one that has to go through all the vetting and, you know, maybe unintentionally pissing this person off by asking too many damn questions. If they want to book the appointment, book it. And then it really is your oh, – I mean, if you have that personality type where they're like, hey, I just want to see this property. Can you show it to me or not? you got to get off the phone. you got to get out of the face quick and say, absolutely, when can I show – when can we book it for you? Or when can we book the showing? And then your OSA, you get off the phone, you text your OSA, and you say, hey, you know, I wasn't able to vet this person in Dean's words as much as I would have liked to because she was getting really impatient. So I don't know if she's working with another agent. I don't know if she's pre-qualified. These might be some things you might want to ask before you go ahead and drive out there. But I did book it for you for Saturday at 3. Yeah, I agree. Perfect. Make your ISA's job or life easier, you know, than – basically pinning them in a corner and then they're not able to book the appointment and they, you know, they might have ticked the person off, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, they're goes... making our ISA's job too hard by, by being so regimented with scripting. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, I wish Voltaire himself was yeah. on the phone. Go ahead. Come on. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. me too. I do too. But see, I've done that before. I sent him and his other OSA, Guillermo, on a uh, showing. For it, one of our listings that they called saying, oh, we're interested, yes. And the, the same type of buyer, it was the same type of lady. And um, they came back pissed off at me they came back after they came back from showing the property because they didn't make that call. And, and what I did was I scheduled it, and I even told them, too, like, dude, just freaking go and show the property. And once you're there, ask them the questions that I could not ask them. We're a team. Like, I scheduled it. Someone's inquiring. Just go out there. And, are you talking you know, about, oh, I, Vanessa, I are you ta oh, Vanessa, are you talking about Voltaire being pissed off or one of the other agents? Because if it's one of the other agents, punch him in the face. Well, like, like, come on, you're kidding me. Are we, are, 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 well, like, it was both of them. All right. It was both of them to where, you know, we, the conversation afterwards was, yes, I should have asked the questions. I should have taken over the script and I should have just, you know, before sending someone out there, uh, obviously he went out there, didn't ask any more questions and my follow up, I'm still calling the lady like, Hey, you know, How's, how are your purchase plans going? Do you need to talk to a lender? You know, because she's in my system. But they did go out there and, you know, uh, didn't That's finish on the, the OSA. script that I they didn't should, finish. They should, they should have called first, introduced themselves, and asked any questions they wanted to ask before driving out there and getting pissed off, finding out the person was a flake or whatever. You know, I tell, my, I tell John Iglesias or Jonathan or any of these people, hey, you make sure you call and introduce yourself today before the end of the day and you confirm the day before so you don't get a no-show 
And by the way, I don't know if she's you know pre-qualified or whatever. So make sure you ask and see if we can refer it over to our lender because you know our lender you know, gives a lot. So we try to give everybody to, to him that we can. So that's on the OSA, whether it's a team leader or not. And you know, Voltaire is my best friend. Whether it's team leader or or just an OSA in the office, that is 100% on them, I think. And that doesn't mean that ISAs get to book, you know, crappy appointments. Right. But if right. you have a buyer that says they want to see something with appointments as hard as they are to come by in this age, you book it, and then you tell the OSA everything that you did or didn't get, and then it's really on them at that point. In my yeah, I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten. And, no, and I think that too. Yeah. I, Vanessa, I can't tell you how many times in the past couple of years I've gotten up off my desk and went running down on a Sunday, on a Saturday, whatever the day was, to show a property where somebody called me. I did a quick how's it going. I got a vibe that I thought I was pretty close, and I went flying down there and got it done. You know what I mean? I mean, double ended. And that just happened to us again. I said, call up Kate. Kate, I'm in New York City this week. You know, this weekend, um, there's a lady that wants to go see 26 Butler. Can you meet her down there? Yes, bang. Down she went, double-ended deal. I can't tell you how many times that's happening. You know why? What I found in the digital age, the new opportunity is other realtors are lazy, spilled, whatever. You pick myriad reasons why they won't do the work. This is about doing the darn work. And like Paul says, there is no work to be done unless we have appointments to go meet people. That's what prospecting is all about. Prospecting is about moving people up to where there's a meeting. Now, in fairness... To, to everybody, you know, that, that's in this, Voltaire is a super busy dude and he's your brother and the owner of the company. If he has a set of standards and you and he have some understanding, you just need to do what Paul said. Voltaire, I'm telling you, I went through it and this is all I could get. So my instinct tells me it's this, but I would recommend on this one, you make a call before you go out. Bang, done. And he can't be mad at you for that. Now tell him that. He can't be. You can't be. You can't be perfect on the phone. And this is where I want to leave this call this week. You can't be perfectly prepared for any of these situations. But I do think you better get out of there with some sort of, a, you know, a motivation. Uh, sorry, not motivation. A timing answer. When do you want to do this? I'm an investor. I want to see this property right now. Great. Great. That's it. Did you want to see anything else while he's out that way? No, I go direct to the listing agent. Okay, awesome. What time do you want to see it? I'll book it on his calendar. And you book it. Now you turn to him, Vanessa, and you say, Voltaire, look, this gal was pretty tough. She's an investor, wants to work only with those people directly. And, and so, you know, that's the best I could get for you. That's all I got for you. You follow? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and honest, like you said, Voltaire's super busy. And I think it gets to a point that I'm, you kind of like begin to get picky with your clients because, you know, we've had, I've been able to, I guess, wash them out so good to where you're meeting with somebody that is good to go, yeah. not talking to, you're going to sign them for sure. Yeah. That once you have someone that, you know, is not like that, you just don't think it's worth going out there anymore. Yeah, that's not good. And yeah, that, hold on. That's hold on. Like, dude, no, like, jump on it. Yeah, ho ho but hold on. You and Voltaire will make that decision for everyone that goes to him. You say, Voltaire, this is one of those where I wasn't able to get as much information. Here's what I know. So do you want to take it or do you want me to give it to somebody else? And then when you give it to somebody else, after killing yourself, he's killing himself with marketing, you're killing yourself with conversion, and if that OSA dares ever come back and push back on you, punch him in the face, like I said, right? As a wake-up call. Oh, we, we went through that already. Oh, yeah. We went through that, and I explained to the OSAs, too. I said, hey, you guys, I mean, for as hard as appointments are to get right now, and you guys are getting so picky and want to come back and ask me, well, what price range and what kind of buyer? Yeah, lazy. Area? Yeah, lazy, oh, lazy, you know, lazy. Like, you guys make me lose my motivation. Lazy. Lazy. That's a problem I'm going to talk about with Voltaire 101. I want everybody on this phone call to hear that at the end of the call here. Stop being so lazy. Okay? Stop being lazy in sales. We are problem solvers as salespeople. That is our primary function. Solve the problem for the people. And don't be so, oh my gosh, I don't even want to, what are we, royalty now? We don't go get dirty? You should be crawling over broken glass to get face to face with people and rec recognizing that it all doesn't go our way. In fact, a small fraction does go. 
right? Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. All right, enough of this. Good call. Appreciate everybody. I'm on vacation next week, but Paul Cantu will be here with Patrick in the hot seat running this next week. Come and support them. All right? Vanessa, good job. Angela, good job. Doug, good job. Thank you to Dean for weighing in. Thank you to Paul for weighing in. Good job, everybody. Go out and practice this stuff. See you next time. Thanks. Bye, Danny. See you guys. Bye, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.